Welcome everyone to the Office 365 Community Office Hours. We are missing our leerless feeder today, Christian Buckley. So Mo, Larry, and Curly here, that's <laughs> all of us, are going to try and do it for you. Uh, my name is Sean McDonough. I'm joined by Mike Nelson and Hal Hostetler. How was your weekend, guys? Hey, this is really formal, by the way. I mean, it's like Christian doesn't start out like this, but you know, this is this is the Sean show today. So he, <laughs> it's not the Sean show. He gives an intro. <laughs> Usually, he just like wings it. But well, my weekend wasn't bad. How was yours? Uh, pretty good. Starting to notice some leaves coming down. I looked out the uh, back window uh, on Saturday, and there was just this mass of yellow coming down. Like, what the heck? When did all these leaves just suddenly turn and start falling? <laughs> so I think we might have bypassed another season again or something like that. So, yeah. How about you? You know, really quiet. It Alan. was under 70 degrees on the, on the carport this morning when I got up at sunrise. I'm <laughs> impressed. It wasn't 105. So, you know. So it's a good day, Hal. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it'll still be up around 100 before the day is over, but, you know, oh, it is the desert. 100? You might need a winter coat for that, right? No, 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 no. That, that doesn't come out till the temperature gets down into the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, boy. All right. Well, let's see. What do we got I... today? Well, Christian did send out a list of questions, so Indeed he I'll, did. I'll just start at the top since I don't have any particular preferences. I did look at a couple of these. Um, so first question comes from Donna Wilson, and she asks, is there any anti-malware, antivirus software included with Office 365 family? family? We can't find anything that says yes or no. Also, why do we have ads and why does it ask to upgrade to premium? Does it know we subscribed for a year? So I can provide input well, on this. Go ahead, Hal. So can I. <laughs> okay, well, but the first, let me get that question back up here again. Okay, so the first thing, anti-malware, antivirus, that's called Windows Defender. It comes with every Windows 10 installation. It works great. It lasts a long time. It's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, it doesn't get in the way of most things, like most of the other antiviruses do. And it doesn't cause you problems with your email because it doesn't have an email scanner like everybody else does. You don't need that. It's a waste of time and effort. They're good means of selling antivirus products. Other than that, it is entirely useless and causes more than nothing to problems. Okay, so I'm off my soapbox for that one. <clears throat> Now then, the ads for the premium, that depends, first of all, where are you seeing these? Are you looking at this online? Uh, are you seeing this in the desktop app? Uh, there is, has been a little blurb in the desktop app about upgrading that is meaningless and doesn't apply to anything. If you have, however, paid for premium and you are looking at this on the web and you're not getting premium, uh, there is there was an issue with that a couple, two, three months ago um, that they fixed um if you're still getting that um then uh, it's either support ticket time or let's see there was one other little bit of stuff in here if i can find that real quick yeah if you're paying for premium you should not be getting any sort of ads whatsoever so you need to identify that you actually are you know logged in to the proper account so I would I would recommend going up in the right hand corner of any office app and making sure that they're logged in to the correct uh, email address that's tied to the premium account, because I've had that before where you have multiple, you know, email addresses. One of them doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have any subscription tied to it. One does and they just logged into the wrong one. So just from a basic troubleshooting, you know, try make sure you're logged into the right account. Yeah. And yeah, for what it's, this, go ahead, Hal. 
I found this little blurb here. It uh, it was either you contact, uh, you, you put in a support ticket, or there is a thing, a trick doing a, a toggle auto renew trick, which is uh, you navigate to your uh, Microsoft 365 subscription billing details on the Microsoft website, toggle the recurring billing state. If you have it set on current, on current, turn it off. If you have it off currently, turn it on. <laughs> uh, you'll need to refresh your web browser. Um, premium features should then appear. Uh, like I say, if that trick doesn't work and you have paid and you are, in fact, the one who is the owner, uh, which is to say you're not dealing with a uh, an Office 365 family subscription of which you are a family member, but not the one who's actually owning it, um, then the support ticket that is, is what you need. You can't make changes if you're not the owner. There we go. I think I got that all out. Can you can you put that uh, link in the chat? Or yeah. In, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, which link is that? The one that I just. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Reference. That's. Well, I can do it this way. Sky rating. Take out a okay. banner Play. and a plane. Okay. Well, that showed up in my chat window very well. No. So. Donna? For what it's worth, Donna, and the point about uh, if you are logged in as someone else, it does make a difference for things. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed to admit this, but prior to us starting the recording of this meeting, we had the three of us in Microsoft Teams trying all sorts of things because we had the recording button, but it was grayed out. I went to make changes. I was told I wasn't an admin, so I don't know if that's related to an account thing, but many different account and uh, related issues tend to show up with people who have multiple accounts. So double check that account, um, as uh, I think Hal initially said. So let's see here. Anna, Anna asks, I've created a group on the on Teams, I assume that is, Example at domain.com. I have added user user one at domain.com to the group. Example at domain.com. I go to the Outlook web, and at the bottom of the screen, there is a group members tab. I look inside, and it's empty. I checked again if the user really belongs to the group. He is. Please support me. If, as long as that's just for information, I'm happy supporting you. But um, I'm sorry, I can't send any money at this time. <laughs> ideas i'm thinking is she she's going to the web is it perhaps a uh, a personal group um an outlook client that she's not getting reflected out to the web or something what do you guys think uh, i mean it, it's <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> it almost looks like there's something you know um, with the group membership, I mean, obviously going into 365 admin and making sure that the um, that the group, you know, the group exists and that the person was added um, to that group, just to validate that, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but she's just going to the Outlook web and looking at the members tab of the group, which may not be, you know, <clears throat> jiving. Right. Yeah, I know you can also on a full client you can easily create a group uh, and add members and of course that doesn't get reflected out so if example at domain.com is a domain level group um, then one would expect to see that show up with everybody's uh, right right but if it's uh, a local group that you created through outlook um, either the client or the web um, app that will not necessarily show up okay yeah i so yeah validate that you've got um this is a domain level group will somebody who doesn't have permissions be able to see who's in that group no okay so yeah. probably worth checking permissions too yep 
Okay. So Mike, I'm looking. I have to, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I have to say that the question number three from Robin <laughs> Ann Pollard, you know, there's something to be said for providing more information. Um, and You're saying brevity is not an ass or a, <laughs> a good thing here? Uh, you know, it's a matter of why am I not connecting? And then a screenshot of, you know, trying to connect to Office 365 really doesn't give us a lot of information. But uh, it could be literally hundreds of things. <laughs> yeah. um, Including 365 itself online. And yeah. that's why there's this lovely little link that I posted at status.office365.com that will tell you if there's any service or health issues. Yes. Well, and I'll say and some of that has to do actually with... actually happens. Yeah, but I, I'll also say that, uh, you know, MFA is uh, usually a big cause of this. Um, when you get the authentication can't be completed because something's wrong with the token uh, for the user, and that usually goes to the authenticator app um, isn't set up correctly if they're doing that. If, you know, we don't even know if, if, if she's using MFA, but I'm just, I'm spitballing here, um, you know, because it's an authentication yeah. issue. So. Yeah, authentication issues require uh, a little bit more information. Yeah. So, <laughs> so help Robin us out. Ann, um, <laughs> <laughs> we keep stepping on each other, Mike. Yeah, I know. Robin Ann, um, we do want to help you. Uh, so if you could maybe expand on the connecting to Office 365, the steps you took, um, you know, what you've got, maybe a browser screenshot, things like that, if this is in fact from a browser and not through some. So she's got the Office yeah, 365 is... logo. She trying to, she may like... be uh, trying to authenticate within an Office app. Yeah, well, that we don't know. It, like I say, this is this is kind of like calling your, your mechanic and saying, my car won't start, why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. could be everything. Or not any, not not anything at all. Oh, okay. Number, well, I got. I had homework on one. Oh, I'm sorry. We should have started with homework. And eh, it's all right. That's all right. <laughs> what was your homework, Mike? It was homework that I made up because when I looked at the questions uh, ahead of time, I wanted to hit this one for sure because okay. I knew the answer right away, and I rarely know the answer like right away, as you know. You know. I'm, it takes me a while to catch on to things. Uh, but number 11 from Chris Zavias. Zevlas, or is that Zivlis. an I? No, Zevlas. Ziv Zivlas, yeah. Zivlas? That's how uh, I'd say. Yeah, okay. Um, he's talking about the REST API. I'm using REST API with graph authentication token to add a user or add a task on Planner. Uh, it looks like a particular token expires. How do you deal with this? Is there any way to change the token TTL or a different way to achieve this? Uh, the Graph API tokens uh, only last for 14 days. And you have to do a refresh in order to, uh, you know, bring that token back to life or you have to basically go out and get a new token. Uh, but currently today, there is no way to change the life cycle of the Graph uh, API token. Um, there are other tokens that you can change, uh, you know, the length of lifetime for, but not for the graph. Yeah, there are a number of good articles written on uh, interacting yep. with graph and the various authentication mechanisms. Um, so you want to use your refresh token, dial home, and yep. get a new live token. Let's see. We can find a link to that. Well, we'll find a link after the fact and post it in. Christian, we'll, we'll give Christian more homework. <laughs> Let him watch this whole thing and suffer through it. <laughs> Didn't he say something about any homework he was giving he's going to delete? He could. Oops. Yeah. He's on his way to <laughs> Branson, Missouri right now. And for, uh, we hope maybe some of you are as well or are joining the North American Collaboration Summit which is happening for the next several days out of Branson, Missouri. It's a conference. Uh, Mark Rackley started. It's 
it grew out of the SharePoint Saturday Ozarks uh, event that he initiated and ran, has run for the last, gosh, probably 13 years now. Um, and the North American Collaboration Summit, he was in Harrison, Arkansas, where he lives with the uh, SharePoint Saturday event. And then he went up to Branson when he wanted to expand. He turned this into a conference. Um, it's a, a fantastic conference in a very nice area. <laughs> I don't know if either of you two have been to Branson, Missouri. It's a wonderful country, but Branson can be compared to uh, Las Vegas circa 30 or 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, many of the talents that finish up uh, in Vegas will end up uh, in some place like Branson. There are lots of old tour buses that go to Branson and things like that. But they built up a nice area along the river, and it really is uh, a nice place to, to visit. Um, and normally I'd be going down myself, but with COVID doing its thing, uh, I think my wife would uh, throw me in the brig for two or three weeks if I got home. And yeah. I don't really want to be in in that long so no 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 so anyway christian's going there and he's helping to coordinate the virtual part of that uh conference uh both mike and i will be moderating some uh oh hal will be too hal is too oh hal you got sucked in too tomorrow okay very good of course i think we have a clue what i'm how to go about doing that but (laughs) <laughs> yeah. This will be in the learning experience like this morning was, I suspect. Yes, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Uh, anybody got a t-shirt today? Uh, I do not. Sorry. <sighs> How about you, Hal? No, just normal. This is normal. Yeah, this is Sean, my... you're the only one. Squashed it. Sweet. So for all the math geeks out there. Oh, not just the math geeks. Who like Lord of the, the Rings? No, the Monty Python. Well, yeah, but that's this is Gandalf. I know it is, but you know it's it's a ba- same basic concept. See, I'm not big of Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. But I am huge on Monty Python. I I huge. love Monty Python myself. Lord of the Rings. I just couldn't. I could not sit there and watch the entire thing because I. I probably fell asleep three or four times. Um, <laughs> yeah, they are a long and series of movies. You find yourself so loud looking for a shrubbery, yes. <laughs> yeah, the money. And it's all about time. a damn ring. It's all about the ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did any either of you two ever read the uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Oh no, I could okay. never sit through no. that. No. The movies, the movies. I mean, they had. A lot of action and whatnot, but the pacing, J.R.R. Tolkien, um, he's a great author, but man, many of his books just kind of go slow. <laughs> I, I read Lord of the Rings and he, there's another one uh, that he authored called The Silmarillion. I could not get through that book. Um, Tol- <laughs> Tolkien was a linguist and um, his love for creating languages and whatnot um, was really on display in Silmarillion. So, you know, for all I you thought, language, I thought Harry Potter was hard enough to, to to you know keep with all the language changes, but Lord of the Rings was just crazy. <laughs> well, to your point, Mike, there was a parody book called Board of the Rings, oh, yeah. was, and it's actually very funny. <laughs> so, I would highly recommend Board of the Rings. Hey, that reminds me. Did you hear that they're remaking The Princess Bride? Yeah, I did. Awesome. It's pretty amazing. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Princess Bride, the golden years. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, one of the great stories from uh, back in the 80s. That was 80s, right? Yep. It was 80s. Yep. Or as my kids like to say. Oh, that was from the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're old beats to our kids. And we hear it all the time every time we go downstairs and have a movie night. (laughs) Anytime. My wife wanted to watch, uh, what was it the other day? She has several uh, 80s movies that she's a big fan of. Oh, Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
I love that movie. And every time, every time 16 Candles is on, my wife has to watch it. She has to watch the whole thing from start to finish. Start to finish. She's dedicated. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Good old days. They don't make them like they used to. Nope. No, we actually went, uh, while I was saying that, we went to uh, the, the theater and saw uh, Tenet. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Tenet, it is a, a very mind-blowing type of film. It uh, is really, you know, takes you a little while to get used to it. It's almost like a, uh, um, uh, what do I say, like a Pulp Fiction. You really don't understand it until you, you watch it for a half an hour and then you start to get it. Um, but so what's, uh, what's the basic premise of the movie, Mike? Moving forward and backwards in time. That's a basic premise. Being able to move forwards and backwards in time to stop Armageddon. Huh. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's an. Would you say it's an action flick? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that gets busted up, and a lot of people get. You know, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of fighting. There's yeah. That's like any movie that Michael Bay directs. I'm like, okay, they're going to blow stuff up. Oh, yeah. They blow up a big plane, a huge plane. Run it right into an airport. <laughs> so as as opposed to landing it at the airport. Yeah, that's right. They drive it right into it. I see. Oh, all right. So question number four. Santosh asks... I am working on importing the PST to O365 mailbox. From the GUI, it's very slow. Do you have any script which helps to import the emails to the Office 365 mailbox, presumably faster? I heard through script it's better compared to the GUI. Please help me. Um, I don't think there's a nice little article on that. Yeah, there you go. Well, let's... And yeah, that, I'm that. just poking that into the chat, and that is how you do bulk imports on email. And Very there's a half a dozen different methodologies in that article. Uh, one thing that I'll note, and that's one big question, is uh, is this a personal import? You're, you've got a 365 home account or family account, and you're just trying to import your PST, and it's slow? Or is this a business arrangement and uh, you're you're trying to fill an exchange server with PSD files and uh, the article I posted is is for that per that purpose assuming that's what's going on um, it uh, there's PowerShell that can be used for it there's a half dozen different things like I say that article goes into fairly good detail and has examples and how to how to's for both the methods that it explains one of them is a, is a bulk upload the other one is they ship you a drive and you put your psds on that and they upload it for you and that would be for a bigger organization obviously yeah um, and that's gonna cost but, uh, yeah and uh, another thing about that uh, i heard from one other webinar i was at a couple months back that uh, um if you're if you're doing a uh, a, a network transfer, which is one of the messes that they're talking about there, and that isn't going as fast as it should. They uh, they have some throttling that that they have in place just as uh, a normal course of business, and uh, a support ticket and or getting hold of Microsoft um, service, uh, they can they can they can take the throttling off to make it go a whole lot faster. So uh, that's all in that article, I believe. Yeah. Well, there there are actually multiple levels of throttling within any tenant um yeah I, the um any sort of migration of the cloud microsoft if they're going to suggest a mechanism and i'm sure that the uh, article that you've got uh mentions this but generally what you're trying to do is remove any network effects latency things like that and remove the potential for any throttling by uploading to a temporary area like in azure um, you'll upload a, a file. I know we do this with SharePoint all the time. Uh, ShareGate, as a migration tool, has what they call insane mode, where data gets pushed up to an Azure storage area, and then it gets input into wherever it needs to go from there. Um, and by doing it that way, you're bypassing all the throttling mechanisms. 
takes a little more planning to do it that way, but um, that is probably going to give you the best results. Okay. Yep. So Sarah Turner, question number five, asks, hi all. In my Teams Admin Center, I can see I can manage which apps users can add or use, but how do I control which of them they see under the ellipse button on the left menu or the more with the ellipses tab on the mobile app? That I don't know. Uh, let's see here. I don't know that. I'll plead uh, ignorance on this one. Yeah, I have to as well, but I know since I was poking around in Teams trying to figure out how to turn recording on, not that I needed. <laughs> uh, it's you were fighting with Teams. <laughs> fighting with Teams, yes. Uh, let's see here. I don't know. Just looking through apps that are available and if you can designate which ones go. I know most cases you can, um, like for instance, the Office 365 toolbar admins can control um, the icons and whatnot that people will see on there uh, to a certain extent. And in that drop down menu, that is. So, anyway, if we're talking about the same area, this will be along the left typically when you're in the Office 365 uh, kind of landing home area. That is not so much a Teams control thing. That is more a tenant control thing. An admin can go in and it's organization settings, I believe, where somebody can go in um, and make changes to the apps that will show up. You can even add your own apps and icons. But that's the more general org settings, not specifically within the Teams uh, admin center. So you might try looking at your org settings if you are a tenant level admin or a global admin. Just uh, look at those settings and I suspect you can make changes there and determine what will show up if this is in fact the right area and what you're talking about. Uh, so I'll have to let me get a link for that and I'll post it in the chat so that Christian can add it into his show notes. Admin apps control, okay. So let's see here, number six, Bryce Harvey asks, hi friends, we are currently using Office 365 Business. All of my users, including myself, have noticed we would be randomly logged out of different applications. It would be one thing if it was happening for just me, but it's happening for all of my users on multiple devices. I'm not a guru when it comes to the Office 365 admin portal. Is there some setting I need to mess with? Any help would be appreciated. I, I that don't sounds know. like a latency issue or some kind of a networking thing. Local well, to where they are, router issue, or switch issue. An iVirus issue, something. Well, I'll periodically have to re-authenticate for uh, after a period of time for things like Office apps and whatnot. Um, if I haven't used it in a while. Okay. Now, if you do not log in within, is it 30 days? Yeah. You have for to licensing. basic, yeah, you have to dial back home for licensing purposes. So uh, once every 30 days, uh, and you will, Oftentimes notice notice this particularly if you're using multiple accounts with the Office apps. Um, for instance, I tend to spend most of my time signed into the Office apps with my personal tenant account, but I access uh, various other OneDrives and whatnot, and so I'll have to reauthenticate uh, to those OneDrives if I don't interact with them or uh, you know frequently on uh, on a daily basis. So 30 days, you do have to dial back home to uh, more or less refresh your licensing window. So. Yeah, I'd be curious to know, I mean, if we got further information about, like how was mentioning, are they all in one location? You know, are all your users in one physical location or are they spread out all over, obviously with COVID, you know, maybe they're all remote. 
then you're talking about, you know, maybe something like you're saying, Sean, is it's not actually not, you know, going back and re, uh, re getting the light, picking up the license again, but they can easily find that out by going to clicking on file and then clicking on account. And it should give them that information right there on that screen in any Microsoft uh, Office app. So that's a good point. And how you're mentioning network latency, is that what you're referring to? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're just sitting there in Outlook or Word or Excel or something like that, and you're working away and suddenly you're kicked out. I mean, that, <clears throat> and that's kind of how I took reading that statement, ah, that, that, that okay. author, his note, that he's just working away or his people are working away and they suddenly aren't logged in anymore or they get kicked out. Well, uh, that that's not normal behavior. That's why I'm suggesting uh, on some other issue not related really so much to Office 365. Yeah, and I can understand that, except that, and maybe maybe we're not, again, not getting all the information, uh, but they're actually talking about a Indeed. logout. So yeah, it's different. I have noticed being, we would be randomly logged out of different applications. Yeah. I, I kind of took that to mean between application usages, but. Yeah. The point you raise, Hal, is, you know, if you're being booted out of an application and your token goes bad, that's an entirely different issue. And at that point, yeah, I'd start mm -hmm. to about the connection to the service and the quality of the network and whatnot. Right. So you got two things to try there, Bryce. Uh, if you want to write in with additional clarifications um, on some of the things we uh, addressed and we'd be able to tune it more specifically to what you're saying, but those are our, our thoughts at this time. And as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so That's my which, story and I'm sticking to it. Exactly. So question number seven, Tony asks, recently when opening, I have been experiencing Outlook shrinking when opening and becoming unresponsive and then cycling a few times to responsive and unresponsive again before settling down and working normally. Anybody know what is going on with Outlook? Shrinking? I like, think he means minimizing. Shrinking, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think he's talking about shrinkage, Mike. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, know. That's, that's what got me. Yeah, I, I, I interpret that to mean uh, the Windows minimizing. Um, and I, Tony, if you've got a number of different uh, accounts that you're using with Outlook, particularly any SMTP or IMAP accounts, um, but also with Office 365, if the service is uh, bogged down or whatnot, uh, you will, you know, I've, I have the same problem where Outlook will go uh, non-responsive and, you know, you click on the window and it says it's unresponsive. Usually at that point, it's trying to dial back somewhere and you've got the call out, but you haven't gotten the call back yet. Um, if you wait it out, as you notice, it tends to settle down and go away. I don't know that there's any way to uh, to resolve that. I think better handling within the Outlook application itself um, would help. But um, I assume Microsoft's probably done as much as it can. Maybe that's a big assumption. You guys yeah, have any they, thoughts? They do have issues from time to time. Um, make sure you're running the latest update. That's <laughs> Oh, they have issues. That's Yeah, I mean, the, there's just lots of little things will come and go, and it's um, and that's always the first thing they want you to make sure of is that you're running the latest the latest version because they have well, they release these things with such cadence. I mean, I'm on the uh, Insider Fast channel, and it's once a week. You know, monthly channel. You're once a month, so uh, and things come up, and they make things. They they make mistakes on the back end occasionally too. So um, that makes sure where you're running the latest version. Yeah, I, if um, it's don't be afraid of running an office repair at some kind too. That never hurts. Yeah, I was going to suggest it may not they, help, but it never hurts. Yeah, that will actually the tool, the office repair tool that Hal's referring to, will actually diagnose the entire. A uh, series of steps that um, your email will do to connect, and it, it's broader than just email as well. Um, well, wait a minute. I'm thinking about the Office 365 tool rather than just Outlook. That's the support and recovery assistant, Sarah, and that that's a good thing to have around also. Okay. And there's also the remote connectivity analyzer, but that's again, I really want to know what you mean by shrinking. Do you mean minimizes? Does it mean it 
disappears. It you know. Oh, the ways that one can shrink. Yes. Now I'm thinking of the incredible shrinking. It's cold water, not hot, right? <laughs> Lily Tomlin. Boy, that's going back. Yeah. Let's see. Question number eight from Marcel. Has anyone experienced how to export a license overview of all users, but within the column assignment path to identify who has direct and who has inherited licenses assigned? In Azure AD under licenses, for example, the Office 365 E3, there is a list. There is, but without filters or export features. Thanks in advance. Well, go, go ahead, Mike. I've not played with that. Oh, somebody's bang in there. I don't know what that was. Uh, wow, somebody's got some chat going on there or something. I'm not hearing anything. Huh. Al, are you? Al's muted. Uh, no. Yeah, I just okay. muted to make sure that it wasn't me. All right. All right. Well, you know, it's just me, I guess. You want me? Um, to, I'll, let me mute for a second. No, I it's heard, all right. It's all right. It's going too. now. It sounded like a... Just a little kid. Yeah, it did. It sounded like a little kid. I was like, somebody chatting? Somebody got a child in the room? I didn't know. Anyways, um, so what I'm looking at here in 365, I don't see anything about inherited licenses being visible. So am I just looking in the wrong place? Because I don't remember ever seeing anything that talks about inherited licensing. I mean, you can see the licenses that are given to people, but I don't see a specific column for inherited or if there's even a field um, for inherited. Do you guys see anything like that? I mean. Um, no, I, he's looking specifically at assignment path. I think he wants to be able to qualify different values there, but I'm not familiar with uh, inherited well, licenses either. Yeah, and I'm trying to understand inherited because in 365, as you know it, each user has to be licensed. And it's not an, unless you go through and you script it, it's not an automatic process. It's not something, you know, you, you can pick and choose who's licensed for what. Um, from an inherited standpoint, does that, do, do they mean like when you get the free Power BI or something like that and everybody in your tenant gets it? I, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not getting that concept of an inherited license. Yeah. Well, this, <laughs> so I kind of shirked a little bit of homework a few weeks back. Uh, where somebody was looking for uh, bulk licensing type scripts for something. And since this is coming back up, I think I need to get on that to write a reporting script for licenses and things like that so that people can export into uh, a CSV and bring them into Excel and slice and dice them. So I'll take that as a piece of homework to report on next week since I've... Uh, shirked it previously tried to lay low wait for it to blow over and stay in my foxhole hmm. okay so let's move on question number nine from sharon howley hello sharon i work in a school and i'm wondering if there's a way to disable private chats between students we want to keep the teacher student chat function thanks in advance can disable chats across the board, but I can you differentiate to whom you can chat with maybe something like groups? You guys have a thought on this? I don't know that. I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't know that either. So, Christian, where are you? <laughs> yeah, really. So, um, so Sharon, um, I'll find, we'll make sure that there's a link. I know that there's uh, there are a number of things out there on how to disable chats, but like I said, that may not be granular enough for you. Um, you're wanting to selectively disable private chats more or less between students and keep it open between teacher and students. Um, I don't know if that's possible either, but um, we'll do a little bit of 
research on that and see if we can figure something out. Yeah, we need Christian. Um, you find something, Hal? Let's see here. Maybe. Oh, fudge. <laughs> Tell you what. Hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> Al is not available at this time. Please leave a message. <laughs> so, Sharon, we we get what you're asking for, um, and that's you know kind of like uh, private uh, breakout rooms and whatnot. Many different sort of useful features um, for typical classrooms. I think are this might be something that comes out of frankly out of COVID and many of the changes that uh, Microsoft has been making to Teams to make it more classroom friendly. Um, Hal, did you find something? You're on mute, Hal. Sorry about that. That was the morning's first uh, card member services call. <laughs> yes, I just poked, poked something into the chat on that, and that's how to disable private chats. I haven't looked at the article. I just found it. Yeah, this is actually the, the article I was going to look up. I found it as well. And it's unfortunately, you notice it's uh, from 2017 and the interface reflects that. Uh, all the settings are totally different and they don't even, the dialogues don't even look the same. So it's possible to disable entirely, but yeah, we will have to do a little bit of research to see if we have any level of granular control or if you could put students in one group and disable their chat capabilities, but we don't know off the top of our heads. Sorry, Sharon. Ah, question number 10 from Tony Follen. Fallen. I have an Outlook online calendar question. Is there a way to edit the meeting title and save it without sending new invites to everyone? In the desktop app, you can do it after the meeting is done, but I can't find a save option in the online version, only send even after the meeting. I, not that I know of. I think that's I one don't. of the benefits of using the full Outlook client, Tony. Um, you know, the web, you, the Outlook client works, but it doesn't include all the bells and whistles that you get with the full Outlook right. client, and I think that's one of them. All right. Question yeah, always, number. Uh, I just wanted to add, I've always had a problem with the way Outlook handles meetings in terms of, you know, like other, other calendar applications, um, Specifically, you know, uh, I've, I've been I've been forced, um, basically, arms twisted behind my back. I have to use Google Calendar, which I despise. Like there's no no other. Same here. <clears throat> um, but you have the ability to forward and copy uh, meetings without notifying everyone or notifying the organizer. Outlook has never allowed you to do that, and that wow. just you know makes little sense to me. But yeah not the full control many of us want. Yeah, and you can, uh, you know, you can also, they give you no ability to actually have people uh, being able to manage the meetings. You can't say that you create a meeting and the attendees can make changes to the meeting. Whereas like in Google Calendar, you can do that. So if you're not around, you know, i.e. like Christian's not around and Sean's gonna run the meeting, um, you know, Sean would be able to go in and modify the meeting, but. <laughs> but we're not bitter about that. No, we're not bitter at all. <laughs> oh, folks, if you were flies on the wall while we were trying to get this running, you would never ask us another team's question again. <laughs> Even the people who are supposed to know oftentimes just don't know. Just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK, so we're in the home stretch, guys. Question yep. number 11, which Mike answered. So question number 12, Neil Dunn says, hi, guys, starting a new conversation in the Teams channel. And when I hit enter to start a new paragraph, it sends the message. Very annoying. Is there a way to stop this? I know this answer. I know this answer. Oh, do I? Teacher, pick on me. me. Teacher, teacher. <laughs> Yeah, well, you were first. You were first, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> your shift enter is your friend. Okay, yeah. 
So yes. whenever you want to start a new line, it's like an Excel. Uh, when you're working in Excel and you want to add another uh, a new line inside of a cell, you do a shift enter. You do the same thing in Teams. And I think in Teams, there's actually a, a setting, isn't there, to a, change it from enter new enter his new line i uh, don't know oh All no right. i'm sorry that's in slack in slack you can tell it when you hit enter uh, it's a new line rather than actually sending the message i don't think they have that in teams yeah i think yeah so shift enter i knew that as well um i i think he's looking for a way to change the default behavior whether it's just for his client or maybe across everything but i don't know of a way to do that yet um but yeah, I don't, think, I don't think Teams you can set that. I, I think that you you can do it in Slack. I know that, but I don't think you can do it in Teams. And uh, with Excel, isn't it, I've seen. with Excel, isn't it Alt Enter? Uh, you can do Shift Enter too. You oh. can either, either one. When you got Word Wrap and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. We gave something of an answer. Yeah. How I'll pick you next time. Mike is not my favorite. <laughs> if we're playing uh, favorites. Okay. <laughs> okay, question lucky number 13 here. Way to have us go out on an unlucky number, Christian. I blame you for this. <laughs> hey, team. Peter uh, Chalice says, hey, team, I'm fairly new to teams, so forgive the newbie question. Hey, we love softballs wherever we can get them. Yeah. Here we go. A client has more than 250 guests, so wants to look at Teams Live. Can I run channels as breakout rooms in Teams Live in the same way that I do in normal Teams? Thanks in advance. So, you guys have a thought on this? I've never tried to do that. <laughs> I think no. that number's been increased. I think it's... Well, he's specifically talking about Teams Live here. So. Yeah. The thing, Peter, is Teams Live, it's best not to even think of it in terms of Teams. Teams Live is good for broadcasting, um, but you are not going to be able to get uh, interaction with people beyond the chat window. So there are not going to be multiple people who can tune in unless uh, they're granted specific rights to. Teams Live is all about broadcasting rather than collaborating. Um, and so channels, you know, as a facet of teams uh, tend to exist within, you know, trying to segregate um, topics uh, and what you're organizing uh, things around. I don't think Teams Live is going to let you run t channels. Um, I don't know this for a fact. I hope hopefully one of the uh, students who gave the teacher an apple for today. Uh, running this down Teams live channels limits and specifications for microsoft teams well, it's in the chat windows first uh for christian channels per team 200s uh, let's see here See if they've got something for. Well, I did say Teams Live. So of course we're doing the lookup right now. So the short answer, unfortunately, is we don't we don't know uh, for sure. But. Um, I suspect you're not going to get channels since it, live events are organized around a, a particular topic already. They're not collaborative. So I, when Christian comes back and uh, does the video, hopefully he can uh, insert a correction there if I'm blowing a bunch of hot air. Yeah. But, um, well, guys, we made it through the list. Yay. How about that? <laughs> so what does everyone else have yeah, going on this Bruder, it's a short list yeah. <laughs> yeah well it is a short list compared to normal he must have uh determined that without his uh fearless leadership we were going to uh go very slow and right. he been correct <laughs> right. <laughs> right overall right. 
But um, well, so if anyone has, um, we'll be pulling the plug here. We're nearly at an hour anyway. Um, if you have questions, uh, make sure you post them to uh, office hours at collabtalk.com. That will send an email to um, each of us on the distribution list. So we'll see your question and can respond to that either directly or within the context of this broadcast. Um, well, not this broadcast specifically, but a future broadcast. Um, and we will, Christian will take care of uh, editing this as always, um, <laughs> summarizing the different points throughout the uh, the video. And it'll show up on collabtalk.com uh, as opposed to he'll have it out on YouTube. I suspect he'll probably um, post it to the uh, Office 365 community on Facebook. All the normal, uh, you know, bat channels and different bat times. So I think we'll go ahead and pull the plug, guys. Thanks for joining right. today. Yeah. Host, Sean McDonough, saying, signing off. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Take care, y'all. Take care.